Good evening, fig friends. It is the first week of September, and we are going to go on a fig-tasting safari through the orchard and taste as many varieties as we can. So the first one is Black Madeira. This is my tree. It's up front. It's morning sun, so it does not ripen as quickly, but it usually doesn't have as many problems with SWD either. So let's see if I can get this out one-handed. If not, I may have to put the video down for a second, but let's see. Ah, I'm going to have to pause it. Okay, so here is the fig. You can see there is fig honey coming down the side of it. Always a good sign. You can see this sunburn. Um, it's actually not sunburn. It's from the overspray of pesticides that I had done earlier. And every pesticide has a uh, oil component to it that makes it stick to the leaves and the tree. And in this case, I overdid it. Too much oil in the tree caused the uh, sunburn. So let's cut it open and see what it looks like. All right, so here it is cut open. Let's see what we've got. Look at that. Oh boy, does that look good. And uh, surprisingly, it looks like it could have gone another day. That uh, outside of it, you can see it's still a little green, but it is nice and jammy. Let's give it a try. Oh, delicious. Oh, absolutely delicious. Hmm. I probably should not have started with Black Madeira first, but oh well. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see if anything can top that. That is good. Alright, let's move on. Alright, next up is my JH Adriatic. Don't think that's a big fig for JH, but not quite ready. Let's see one over here. This is the first couple of the year. That one's definitely ripe. No fig honey. Let's check it out. All right, let's see what we have inside here. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Nice and jammy. Very jammy. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Hmm. Mmm. Intense berry flavor. Super intense berry flavor. Delicious. Very, very good. I don't get too many figs this ripe because of the uh, SWD, but again, in the front, they seem to not like the trees as much. Probably because it's a... Uh, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, less trees up here. Easier for me to take care of it, get rid of the spoiled ones and split ones so they don't multiply. Boy, JHA Dratic's good. I think um, I'm going to actually skip over to my Green Ashia next to see how similar it is. Alright, let's go find it. Alright, here's my Green Ashia. I'm interested in comparing that to JHA Dratic. Let's see. This one looks like it's probably pretty darn spoiled. Just pull it open here. Yeah, definitely a little spoiled from SWD. We're going to toss that to the side. Hope the dog doesn't get it. Let's see if I can find another one. Hmm. Oh, there's a couple up here. This one might be good. Let's cut her open and see. All right, let's see what we have here with Green Ashia. Nice and berry inside. Very jammy. Looks very similar to JH Adriatic for sure. But I do know. Oh, Fisher. <laughs> Sorry, the dog is trying to get my figs. Um, I do know that the um, Green Ashia can get much darker than this if let ripen on the tree with hot weather. We haven't had real hot weather lately. Um, been the high 70s, maybe low 80s. But let's give this guy a try. Mmm. Mmm. Boy, that's good. Love, love Green Ashia. 
It has the same berry flavor as a JH Adriatic, or Adriatic JH, but um, I don't know how to explain it. More, uh, more deep. Kind of almost has a little bit of that dark black Madeira flavor to it with the pop of berry. Very, very good fig. Definitely, usually in the past years, has been my favorite green fig. Um, I think I may have one more to try out here, but so far, Greenishia is leading the way for the green figs by far. All right, let's move on. All right, I was hoping to have a Brogiotto Nero to try tonight, but they look like they need one more day. I'm trying to remember what half these things are. Blanca Ramada, Blanca Negra Ramada. Not ready yet. And RDB. So RDB is one of my wife's favorite, but uh, not mine usually. And the thin skin really promotes SWD, which makes it tough. But um, let's go ahead and see if we can't give one a try. See how bad the SWD may have gotten in that eye. Doesn't look too bad. It's not too squishy. Let's cut her open. All right, so Rondé de Bordeaux, RDB. Let's see what we've got. Beautiful inside. It's a beautiful fig. Nice and round, dark purple. Pretty inside to it, jammy. Let's see how it tastes. Um, berry flavor. Sweet. Very sweet. And a little bit on the... I don't know how to explain the flavor other than lighter. A lighter berry flavor. Like, um, oh, it's almost the, the best way I can explain it is when someone sings, they could have a high pitch voice and they can have a low pitch voice. And berry flavors are very similar in that regards. But, all right, let's move on. All right, next up is by Fede. It's been a very good fig this year. Don't know if I have any ripe, actually. Uh, well, it's not quite ripe, but there were some beautiful figs this morning, but I already ate them. All right, doesn't look like there's any. Daloso, not even sure that is actually gonna ripen, but we'll see. Oh, wait a minute, my fairy may have one. Let's see, is that ripe? That's ripe, ripe enough. All right, it's very small for my fairy compared to the norm, but it's got the skin cracking that a lot of them have. Let's give it a try. All right, by fairy. Been a great fig this year. I believe last year it was too. It's hard to do with one hand. All right, there we go. By fairy. Not as jammy as normal, but still definitely has some jam in it. Especially this one here. All right, let's give it a try. It's good. Very similar to like a Chicago Hardy. Just a good classic fig. It's not gonna always knock your socks off, but it's very reliable. All right, let's move on. All right, next is a good comparison to Biferi. This is Chicago Hardy. Let's see if I can find one. That one's been half eaten. A whole bunch ripe on here. He's gonna find one that's not spoiled. There we go. Let's try this guy. Come on. Might be a little underripe. But let's see what we got here. Let's cut her open and check. Alright, normally Chicago Hardy is darker, but this one was shaded. And this side of the house here is kind of shaded to begin with. But let's try it. Let's see what we got. Looks pretty good inside. Mount Etna type, very similar to what the Biferi was. And uh, to be completely transparent and honest with you, part of me showing you all these and taking a bit of time looking at them is also to make sure that there are not significant numbers of SWD larvae. The SWD has been significant this year, especially after being gone on vacation last week. Um, thank you, Kelby and Steve, for coming, trying to help clean up the orchard as much as possible. Um, I also had a, a watering issue that you'll see later in the video when I get to the backyard that uh, they really saved my butt on because my watering timer uh, 
um, actually malfunctioned on like the first day of vacation. Go figure. All right, looks safe enough to eat. Let's try it. Very good. You know, Chicago Hardy is just one of those figs that it's very good, it's very reliable. Yeah, your wasp. It's never going to knock your socks off, or very rarely. But um, it's a very consistent fig and very prolific. It's a very popular fig, and one that I highly recommend northern growers because it does ripen somewhat early. All right, let's move on. All right, my poor Maltese beauty tree. It's another one that defoliated due to lack of water. Let's see if we have anything ripe enough to pick. That one feels pretty ripe. Some of these are starting to split, surprisingly. I don't remember Maltese Beauty splitting too badly, but... All right, looks like... Oh, that's one more to check. Oh. All right. Where was that one? Right here. That's bagged. It should help prevent SWD, hopefully. Um, beautiful fig. Maltese Beauty. People always ask the difference between Maltese Beauty and Maltese Falcon. Um... In my opinion, they're not very similar. Maltese Beauty looks very much like Black Madeira. Very round, very dark usually. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous fig. Maltese Falcon is usually a little bit more oblonged. Um, Maltese Falcon is also not pure red inside. It's more amber. And this guy is usually pretty nice inside. Let's, let's crack her open and take a look. All right, here we go. Looks very, very, very jammy inside. Look at that. What a beautiful fig. Alright, let's try it. Hmm. Hmm. Not as good as I remember it. It's actually a little bland, a little watery. I wonder if I overwatered it a little bit. <clears throat> hmm, kind of a let down on that one. It could also be with the defoliation that there's just not enough to produce enough sugars, especially with the amount of fruit I have on it. <clears throat> I was hoping it would bud back out because this one defoliated a while ago. You can see there's some leaves coming back out, but not quick enough to keep up with the fruit production. My guess is what happened with this one is not enough leaves, not enough sugars. All right, let's keep going. Okay, here's a new variety for me. First time trying it, white Madeira. Didn't expect this tree to produce this year, but boy, look at all the figs on it. I've got this one, and then a smaller one over here that I'm gonna pick. And then this one looks ripe. Try the bigger one. All right, give me one second to get this unwrapped. All right, it's a very young tree. Um, got this from Bass a couple of years ago. Didn't get any fruit off of it last year, but let's uh, cut it open and see what it looks like inside. All right, here we go. Beautiful fig inside. Probably could have used a little more time. You can see how white it is, especially at the top. Let's give it a try, though. Oh, very good. Hmm. Very similar to J.H. Adriatic. Hmm. Good fig, though. Look forward to those. I wonder if uh, that small one's, well, I got a lot of other try, varieties to try, but I wonder if that one's more jammy. It's a little a little older, or a little more ripe. All right, but I got too many others to try. I'm going to be full. Let's move on. Okay, Coldidame Grese. Beautiful fig ripening up here. Let's see if I can get that off. All right. One definitive way to say uh, to 
tell the varieties Coleidom, as you see this neck here, all Coleidoms have that neck. What a beautiful fig. It's a little shaded, so it's not fully colored up, but uh, beautiful. It gets this nice cracking on it. Sometimes it'll get honey. We just haven't had the heat. Beautiful fig. Very different. All right, now inside should be dark red. Let's see. Well, that kind of stinks. I just got stung on my ear while cutting that fig open. Bee flew into my ear. I thought it was a, just a gnat or something. Went to pull it out and it got me. I don't know if it was a wasp or a bee or what, but that's going to leave a bit of a mark. Anyway, back to the Coley Dom. Let's see what it looks like inside here. Very nice. Very, very nice. Not quite as dark as normal. Um, I'm going to guess that's probably up to this one being shaded, but still a, a beautiful, beautiful fig. I think we're kind of missing out a little bit in this ripening stage, um, lacking the heat. I know uh, it was very cool last week when Kelby and Steve were here picking. They said that not a lot was ripening, and if they were, they were slow. So I think, unfortunately, we haven't had real warm temps, and it doesn't look like we'll have them in the next couple of weeks. And then, you know, the season will be winding down, so kind of a disappointing end to the fig season, but we're still getting a few good ones. I may try to put some in the greenhouse. Um, just, boy, it's a pain lugging them back and forth is all. But let's give this guy a try. It's a big fig, real big fig. Oh, that is delicious. Mmm. Really, really good. Um, the Coley Doms tend to have a... Um, uh, slightly different texture, I would say. Like, they're seeds you don't really notice, and it's got, like, an airy texture to it that I, I absolutely love. Delicious, delicious fig. It doesn't have quite the berry punch that the uh, Green Ashia does, but it makes up for it in its, um, you know, shape, its color, everything being beautiful on it, and that airy, I don't know how to explain it other than it's very um, regal, the uh, texture to this fig. Mm. A delicious fig. It's another one I would add to the to the must-have list, even though all Coley Doms are, are pretty late ripening. You see, we're, we've had a good season, and the first one ripened um, first week of September here, so they are definitely a late ripener. Oh, can't eat all these. i got to keep moving on. Okay, next is my Blava. My Blava looks very blah. Figs do not look like they have formed very well, but... Let's take a look at one. You'll see some of my trees look like this, where the figs look... I don't know how to explain it. Um, smoother? Less vigor? Less less vibrant? And I think a lot of that is caused... I had the original problem with not getting enough water, where I left the water on in the one zone, or on the hose, when I was gone for the weekend. And I think this one was one of the ones that lost a lot of its leaves. And when it loses, it goes through that like wilt uh, period... It tends to put your figs into like a, oh my god, I must ripen before I, you know, before we, you know, die, you know, like I gotta reproduce. And I think what happens is it causes the uh, fig to ripen very early. Um, and usually it's not very good. But I'll cut it open, we'll take a look. So my guess for this is it's not actually gonna be ripened inside, it's gonna be uh, dry. But let's see. Hmm. A little in between, but definitely not ripened correctly. Not going to eat that. I don't know if anybody remembers if I had Blava ripen last year. I think I did. I think it was pretty decent, so... I think this is just a poor gardening on my point, my part here. Alright, let's move on. Alright, next up is a uh, fig that I haven't been real fond of. Um, I think I had some sweet figs off of it last year, but I keep it around because it's interesting, different and produces very large figs. Unfortunately, this one down here has SWD all over it, but let's see. Well, it's not spoiled. It's probably just just getting attacked. But you see, I mean, look how big that fig is. It's a very large fig. And if I remember correctly, this is a honey fig inside. It's a little soft around the end here, so there's probably larvae in it, but let's pop it open and take a look anyway. 
All right, so let's see. Yep, and you can see it's a very concentrated honey fig. And I think it's boiled from the SWD, but let me get a little bit of mold on it down here. Let me take a little whiff here and see what it smells like. Boy, it doesn't smell spoiled. It may just be that jammy interior. I'm looking to see if the SWD got it real bad. I know it's kind of gross, but I gotta tell you, if you're living in Pennsylvania at this point, SWD will become a problem for you. And you have two choices. Pretty much give up the hobby, or get used to them. You're gonna eat a bug every once in a while. It's not a big deal. Um, if it bugs you, you can do what I, if it bugs you, ha ha ha, uh, but you can do what I do, which is usually I put them in the fridge overnight, and that'll kill any eggs or larvae that's in them, and then, uh, you won't even know they're in there, but let's give this guy a try, I may have to spit this out if it's spoiled. Oh, I dropped that one. Not spoiled, though. Somewhat tasty. Sweet. Not a lot of flavor to it, just a lot of sweetness. All right, moving on. Here's a fig I wanted to try, but it's not cooperating very much this year. This is my Bordeso Negra Armada, and um, it's having a problem with splitting really badly. Didn't have a problem with that last year that I recall, but even the split fig, look how nice that inside looks. And uh, I know it's been attacked by SWD, so I'm not going to try it. But boy, do I want to. I think there's another split one over here. It's really quite a shame. Because boy, do they look good. So hopefully I'll get a couple of these before the end of the season. Um, when it's really warm and dry, these figs are phenomenal. And they have the uh, variegated coloring, which is just an added bonus. Galicia Negra, not a single fig produced this year. So next is an interesting tree. This is my Coldedam Blanca Negra, directly from Pons, but I'm not sure it's the correct variety. So remember how I told you Coldedam should have a neck on every fig. And you can see it's not really looking... Colde Damish, Colde Neckish, Colde whatever. And uh, the first year I had this, you can see I had a fruit that turned purple, <coughs> and I had a fruit like this one that stayed white. This year, they're all kind of this in between color, and I don't know if it's the heat, the conditions, or what, but I am leaning towards this being a mix up by Mr. Pons. Kind of hard to tell. It could just be a climate difference, right? If I could, if I send this to somebody in California, maybe it uh, would look totally different. Just hard to tell. But let's take a look at the inside here. All right, let's see what the inside looks like. Yeah, I don't know. Cavity, not real dark. Everything's telling me that this may not be true to name. So, I'd be interested to see if anybody uh, has contact with Mr. Pons. Show him this part of the video. See what he thinks. But I think I will not be trading or selling this as Colidon Blanca Negra until I have a few more seasons on it. For now, it'll be Colidon Blanca Negra question mark. This isn't looking quite ripe, but for the point of this video, let's try it. No, it's actually, it's actually pretty tasty. Very sweet. Um, well, let's try a bigger bite here. I was a little bit cautious as it didn't look like it was going to be any good, but... Hmm, it's actually very tasty. Very tasty. Hmm. That's surprising. I did not expect that out of this little fig that looked like it hadn't quite ripened correctly. Very, very tasty. Hmm. 
yeah, I'm gonna have to look up the leaf pattern, Ponza's book, and see how it compares to a lot of the leaves that I have on here too. See if that helps give it a hint. I mean, I can compare it. My other Coley Dom is over there. The leaves look similar, so it's it's hard to tell. It's a problem with figs. Unless you have a DNA test done between the one that's known and yours, it's very, very difficult to tell if it's true or slightly different or completely different. I mean, obviously, if it came out green, you would have known there was a problem. Or if it came out, I don't know, brown with... Uh, Large fig and open cavity. I don't know. But uh, let's move on. Okay, here is Calderona de Minor. And I gotta speed this video up a little bit so I don't bore everybody to death. Oh, actually, this, I gotta be careful. This is a different tree. Just this guy here. These big old figs on them. Look at the size of these suckers. I'm not sure they're ripe, though. Bummer. They are not ripe. So we are gonna keep moving. Okay, this is my, uh, whatchamacallit, name I can never remember how to pronounce correctly, Bordesote. No, Barnesote, I'm sorry, Barnesote. Let's see. Where is a good fig to try? Let's go with this guy down here. Can't tell if that's spoilage. I think it's just a defect in the fig. Let's cut it open and try it. So this fig is kind of funny doesn't have a big eye, doesn't have thin skin, but yet the, the SWD absolutely loves it. Let's see what the inside looks like. If I remember correctly, two years ago this fig was delicious. Last year we had so much rain, I don't think I got a single good one. But it looks jammy. Doesn't look like the sugars are fully developed. I thought this used to be dark, but I could be wrong. Let's try it. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Could have used a little longer to ripen. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. I'm just noticing that eye is pretty open. Oh, that's on the different tree. I got to move these trees a little further apart. That's it. But going back to the Calderona de Minor, very open eye on that. Interesting to see how that fares. All right, I'm gonna skip. The two black Madeiras here. I'm going to skip. I believe that's a black Madeira as well. And let's go around the corner. All right, so here you can see some of the defoliation I had due to the watering system not working. This is my improved Celeste. Dropped all of its figs, dropped all of its leaves, or almost all of its leaves. Was not real happy, but it will survive. And quite frankly, the second crop that I get out of the improved Celeste is never as good. All right, Coley Dom Ramada. I'm not sure. I got a lot almost ripe. This one defoliated pretty well too. Well, this one's a little cracked. Maybe I'll just try cutting it open for video purposes. Latex coming out of the stem, so you know it wasn't quite ready. Another beautiful fig if I hadn't burned it. Let's cut it open and see what it looks like. Oh, but there's the neck. So, you see all the other Coledoms I have have this big neck. That Coledom Blanca Negra, it's not there. So, let's cut this open. So, even as I cut this open, I could see some of the latex coming out, so it's definitely not ripe. But let's see what we've got. Oh, pleasantly surprising. You can see, it's not as ripe as you'd like, but it's still got a jammy red interior in it. And that one's def that side's definitely less ripe. But um, I'm going to try it. Hopefully uh, it doesn't burn my tongue with the latex. You don't want to be chewing on the latex. Yeah, sugars have not had a chance to develop. It does have that airy texture, though, that I was talking about with the Coledoms. Mm. Hopefully I'll get some of these to ripen here, even though it dropped quite a few of its leaves. It's loaded with fruit. I should probably thin it, but the season's so short here. Might as well just let it go. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference at this point, especially with all the figs already swelling. All right, next tree. 
This is my white Texas Everbearing. I was getting some delicious, delicious honey figs off of this. Um, now, let me show you something sad. You can see it defoliated. And I go over here and uh, let's see if I can find one that does it. There you go. Just rolls away. I had hundreds of figs on this tree. And every once in a while, you'll just look over and one will fall and roll away. So they are not going to ripen. Um, right behind me here, I have Pretto. Pretto's doing pretty well, although it had some water issues too. So you can see a lot of the figs are pretty small on it. Not common for Pretto. Normally Pretto has very large figs. I'm trying to see if any of these are ripe and not overripe, as in found by SWD. Let's try this guy. Yeah, latex, that's not a good sign. Could have used longer. But let's cut it open and take a look. Okay, Pretto, believed to be the same as Black Madeira by many. Looks very similar. The only thing I say is it grows different. Um, this Pretto and the other three Prettos I have all grow in kind of a bushy, low, compact form. The Black Madeiras I have all grow and want to, they tend to want to grow in a tree form. Got that one, that one, that one. And even the ones from JFE that I have over there somewhere in UCD, all kind of the same thing. But back to this, not quite ripe, but you can see that jammy interior, which Black Madeira, Pretto, both taste, you know, exactly the same. This is what we go for. I mean, this is the creme de la creme in the fig world, this and Black Madeira. So it's, it's not perfectly ripe, so it's not going to have quite the full flavor, but I'm still going to enjoy it. Yep, still delicious. Sugars are definitely not fully there yet, but it's got that tingling on your tongue and that deep flavor. Like I said, if you're talking about um, vocals, you'd say high pitch, low pitch. This is a low pitch fig. I like that. Maybe I'll go with that from now on. Low pitch fig. Hmm. Very good, though. All right, let's keep moving. All right, Soda Sicilian, another fig that the SWD just absolutely loves. They've got bigger eyes. Um, if I could get one of these to ripen in hot weather, I think I had it, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I want to say the year before because last year I don't think anything ripened well. But if you can get one of these to ripen in hot weather where you get that honey eye on them, boy, are they good. Let's see. Looking for one that's ripe. But it doesn't say, SWD lives here. Hmm, oh, I think I just stepped in one. Jeez. I'm trying to clean up the uh, orchard, but it's just a never-ending task. Huh, Do I may not have one that's perfectly ripe. For this video, I may have to settle for something a little underripe. Just check them all here. It's probably a pretty long video, I apologize. But we're having fun, aren't we? All right, where'd that one go? Let's try it. Well, no latex, that's a good sign. Big fig. Produces very, very well. Um, it's funny, the elderly gentleman I got it from in Sotus, New York, he always kept it for its brebas. It's too cold up there to really get the main crop. And I don't think I've ever gotten a Brabo off it. Or maybe, you know, I may have had one this year or maybe one a couple years ago, but very few. And I did check on the tree um, last weekend, actually, while I was up. And it died back to the ground, but it's recovering and it's growing. I don't think there's any fruit on it this year, but uh, it's still alive. So it's always good to see the, the mother tree, um, you know, still kicking. All right, let's cut this open. Okay, so does Sicilian. Could have used a little longer. Large cavity, which is normal. Definitely looks like it's underripe, for sure. This should be um, very jammy on the inside, and it is not. But I'm going to try it anyway. Let's give it a go. It's still good. Definitely underripe. Meaty fig. 
has a good bite to it. It's not like the Coley Doms that are airy. This is more of a, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat a fig in order to not be hungry. Whereas the uh, Coley Doms are um, more like, I'm a queen, I'm sitting on my throne, bring me something royal. So very different in terms of the figs. All right, I'm not going to eat the rest of that because it is underripe. Let's move on. All right, Italian 258. I don't remember this one being such a late ripener, but it might be the position in the orchard I have it. I'm not sure, but it is um, very late ripening for me this year to the point of where I'm not even sure I have one to try for this video. I don't think I do. Nope, doesn't. Uh, there's one more over here. Nope, nothing. But right next to it, I do have Genovese Nero. And may not have any ripe figs in that one either. Um, again, if you haven't seen previous videos I've done on these two varieties, I do believe they are the exact same fig. Hence, I have them right next to each other this year, just to kind of be able to monitor the characteristics of them. I will likely never tell you it is the same fig 100% confidence because there's just too many variables. You can see some figs here that aren't ripening quite right. And I don't see anything that we can try here today. Oh, wait, what's this? What's this? Hold on. Stop the presses. It's not colored up, but it is soft. It doesn't look like a I-258. Let me make sure I got it off the right tree. Uh, yep, I-258. Or no, I'm sorry, not I-258. Jeez. Genophis Nero. It was in the shade, so it's not colored up at all, but it does feel soft. Well, let's see if it ripened. Let me open it up. All right, not at all the um, showpiece for Genovese Nero. They definitely look a lot nicer than this normally, but let's open her up. Still underripe, but jammy in there. Let's give her a try. Oh, very good. Mm. Yeah, both I-258 and Genovese Nero in the past have been delicious figs. And you can see, even though this one isn't ripe, it's very, very good. So I'm looking forward to more of these. It's strange. Um, normally the figs look very much identical. This year, for whatever reason, my Genovese Nero has much smaller figs on it everywhere compared to my... I-258. Well, although some of these are small up top here. It might just be that these haven't swelled or um, they're both in fabric pots. Hmm, not sure what the difference might be. It's strange. This one has some much larger figs towards the bottom there with no figs up in the new growth or the newer growth until you get over to this branch that has them on the newer growth. Whereas the Genovese Nero is all on the top growth and very few, some down there, and those are bigger actually now that I say that, so never mind. That's an air layer I'm trying to do, though it grew kind of out of control, so I'm not sure if that air layer is going to work out too well. I'll probably wait for it to go dormant and then cut it off where it doesn't have as uh, much of needs and it can put out some roots over the winter, fall, spring, before it really starts to have a lot of nutrient and uh, water expectations that it has to feed. All right, let's move on. All right, here is Black Ashia AD. Not to be confused with Black Ashia UC Davis. And let's see if I can find one that's nice and ripe without SWD damage. This uh, fig is very, very prone to SWD. I think it's the thin skin, because it always has a tight eye. It's getting dark, so let me cut this open. All right, Black Ashia AD, very similar, if not identical, to Violet de Bordeaux. Usually a good fig if you can keep pests off of it. Wow, look at that. Gorgeous inside. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's give her a try. Mmm. Very rich berry flavor. I wouldn't necessarily say deep flavor. 
or low flavor, deep flavor, right? Going with deep and high, yeah. But um, definitely towards the deep end. Very good fig. Very, very good fig if you can keep the SWD off of it. All right, here is Norde Barbantan, which I believe is similar, if not identical, to my Brogiotto Nero. At least the figs look extremely similar. Um, I don't know if any of these are fully ripe. It's a beautiful fig, though. I mean, you see how big it is. Dark purple, very round shape. One of my favorite. I mean, Brogiotto Nero is... For looks, one of my favorite, and I know when I trade to some of the restaurants for food credit, um, this is one of the favorites that they like because it makes a great presentation. This one's about to fall off. Not its usual standard. Let's see, what about this guy here? Mm, let's pick it. What the heck? You can see, this is smaller than normal still, but still a very big fig. Very pretty color. Let's cut it open. All right, as I cut through that, you could definitely feel that it wasn't fully ripe, but let's see what we've got. Nice red interior to it. It's never um, a super rich fig, but it's usually very syrupy if, if, you know, if you can get it to go long enough. This is a little jammy, but not up to its normal standard. Of course, I'm saying that for Brogiotto Nero, this is Norde Barbantane, which I believe is the same, but I could be wrong. So Norde Barbantane, let's give it a try. Pretty good. Just like I would have expected from uh, Brogiotto Nero. Good, but um, Brogiotto Nero, you really need to get perfect where that honey is coming out of the eye in order for it to be its maximum flavor. Anything less than that. And it's, um, you know, just a good fig. Okay, my last green fig to try is Rockaway Green. Years ago, I did a comparison between Rockaway Green, J.H. Adriatic, and Green Shia, I believe. Let's see. Looking for a nice ripe one. This one's splitting... It's one that's kind of ripe. It's hard, you know, normally with these uh, SWD, I have to pick the figs before they get super ripe. It's a shame, but it is what it is. Let's try this guy. He's splitting a little bit. But let's uh, see, this is Rockaway Green. Okay, Rockaway Green. Very nice inside. I'm running out of light, so these might be looking a little bit lighter than they are. This is actually a pretty deep red. Let's see how it shows up. I'm going to watch the video later. Let's give it a try. It's okay. Not a lot of flavor to it. Might be because it's not perfectly ripe, but... Um, I would say Greenishia is by far my favorite, J.H. Adriatic, and then Rockaway Green. Let's keep moving. Okay, this defoliated fig here is one that's missing a tag. Not quite sure what happened to my tag. Sometimes the wind will blow them off, but I normally find them around the orchard. I haven't found any of these around the orchard. But there are a few figs that are nicely cracked on here. Let's give this a guy a try. I'm pretty sure that's a Chicago Hardy. A little bit of insect damage and kind of spoiled, but let's cut it open anyway. All right. Definitely looking like with the defoliation it didn't ripen correctly. This should be a really dark red, well, assuming that it is a Chicago Hardy. I'm going to have to look back at some of my records and verify it. Not sure I really want to try it, but eh, what the hell. Yeah. No, not much sugar there. I think that tree, I might as well pick the fruit off of it at this point with the defoliation and try to keep the SWD at bay. Same thing for this guy, defoliated. 
Um, I'm trying to remember what this was. This was at Angelo's Dark, which normally produces some amazing figs. I feel bad for this because, like I said, it normally produces just stupendous figs. But um, it's not going to be its year, unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, all these figs are ripening, or trying to ripen, but they don't have any energy from the, the leaves, so they are not ripening well. Just open it up, you can see. So it's ripening, but it's going to have a lack of sugars, lack, lack of sugar, because there's no, or very few leaves on the tree. I'm going to try it anyway. Yep, bland. Definitely not up to the Angelo's Dark standard, so... <clears throat> that's a shame. Alright, well that's a tour of the orchard. Nearly every variety. I think there's a handful that we didn't get to try tonight. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of my orchard for a whole. I think that might be the first time I've done a, a video with nearly every variety ripening. Pretty cool. Hope uh, you enjoyed, and for those of you that stayed for the long run, you got too much time on your hands. Go grow some figs. All right, I'm P.A. Figs. Have a great night.